Cleaning. Cleaning. Cleaning started with water. Its evolution brought soap. It was later presented that soap was harsh and soap-free surfactants were introduced. Those surfactants became questionable and newer sulfate-free surfactants were presented. Well, in fact, some sulfate surfactants were far gentler and far more effective. It was then suggested that surfactants were bad in general and that oil should be used for cleaning the skin instead. The modern day has gone further to introduce micellar waters and water-free cleaning systems, or in its privileged language form, cleansing, cleansing systems, suggesting that water cleaning should be less frequent to preserve skin's integrity, what has become the beginning of questioning water. She used to make tea. She used to empty ashtrays. Today she's 89 years young. She chews nergum every day and she says it helps her stay awake during church. Humans made drones by copying birds. Birds are fighting back when girls say they're running errands. They're actually at the mall sniffing candles. Scented candles sell very well. A well-meaning company is doing good by connecting the world and then only pacifying unsuspecting public for a decade and inspired a fiercely loyal workforce. Wearables still seem to be a niche market at best. Only two stocks of smallpox remain, one held by Russia and the other stock held by the US. In the autumn, Squirrels think about nuts so much it may make their brains swell to minimize your time fending off unsolicited helpful tips. A lactation consultant based in Brooklyn suggests being polite but terse. Men. Men think all soup is healthy to this very day. Now circle the space partner. Clean energy, no jitter, no crash. I circle the space partner. Dust filled, noisy, bombarded by horns and pneumatic drills beneath a cloudy sky that seemed to want to rain and cut it. Feels like the end of the world is near, but not near enough. To get anywhere, you had to go everywhere. And I'm tired of having to wonder whether they did it out of stupidity or did it on purpose. In a city of the mobile user and their mean signs, process desires, desperate energy, beauty produced by the attempt to escape the narco cart girl jaws of that fucking partner. Fuck him. Offend them at your peril. Nip it in a bud. Hey, partner, what's worse? Dust or mud? Nardies! Are these dark times? Or are they unconscionably stupid times? Are they both? Is it a case that the worst, when it comes, comes in a clown car? How did I live so long believing that evil might have its own dignity partner? The gender neutral word partner really has been hijacked by progressive straight women. You're not allowed to use the word partner unless you actually run a business together. <laughs> unless you're a cowboy. Greeting another cowboy who's also exploring the Wild West and having adventures. But it's a good thing he did not click. You see, calling your own opinions unpopular is telling on yourself and not in a way you think. I am strapped indoors, cause delay. Proving people wrong since 2008. Someone who was in two minds about things, perhaps. Telling it like it is, even when it isn't. Speaking reality into existence. These were his nine months of self-imposed exile in financial comfort. Will he survive? 
His widely publicized self-immolation via social media presents only the latest in a steady series of business leader breakdowns, temper tantrums and spontaneous combustions over the past years, yet the unnerving details of his story offer up a particularly damning case study into what happens when our current soon over pathological levels of bravado meets the stock reality of a demanding and highly scrutinized job. I wish people who you survive and thrive in the same sentence were not alive. His success is the success of the success sequence and his deep, sinister, Freemason-like commitment to the idea that a show must go on. Show must go on. There is always more show. I don't even think he loved us. But he did love making us miserable by refusing to leave. This was how people disappeared from history, wasn't it? They weren't raised, they were explained away. Explained the death. And how lovely it was, this celebration of our capacity to produce success. And if you and if you measure success in terms of excess, and if, you, and if you measure success in terms of numbers, chickens, cows, and pigs are the most successful animals ever. But they were the good years. The type that would inspire a Scorsese montage. Millions and then billions of smartphones going out, billions and then trillions in rising company valuations. Your, your screen is bright and it's sharp. And while there may be slightly better screens out there, you'd only be able to tell by holding the phone side by side. <laughs> Do you think it's neoliberal that it's cheaper to buy a new printer than it is to replace the ink cartridges? <laughs> is it unethical for me to not tell my employer of automating my job? These self-automators have tackled inventory management, report writing, graphics rendering, database administration, data entry of every kind. One automated his wife's entire workload too. Is that neoliberal enough? Neoliberalism has conned us into fighting climate change as individuals. Bad data, very bad. Bad data, very bad. Enter, 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 and expand. Enter and expand. Bad data, very bad. Live it up, 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 live I drink a big glass of water and go submerge my dick in her sink and we chill for a little while and I bail riding home the wrong way down the street in the middle of the night. It is of no consequence to me what other people think of me. What matters is what I think of them. You just, you just stink hard, don't act, and then you question me when I do. The world is like cactus. It's impossible to sit down. And I don't remember last time I ate, then again I don't remember last night I can't continue getting high and then confusing it for lust. Will I make friends here? Well, probably not. This is the very best of the voices in my head. Fuck, I love when an email finds me well. Cucumbers you could pickle, the rhubarb you can make into jam. Files not available in your country, files you watched without me, the artist at home. Minoxidil in the bathroom, black t-shirt reading, thank God for abortion. And I wanted to say cock. But the word wouldn't really form in my mind because it was too obscene and penis always sounded so ridiculous. <laughs> Take a shower to wake myself up, it always helps. Plus, I like to fuck with wet hair. Weird but true. 
Trust your genes, you don't have to be involved. I just want to do this, that's all for myself and for nature. You believe in nature, don't you? She's like that. She does not know what she's doing. And I don't know what to tell her. A puffy-faced woman my age whose wooden beads rattled at her tan bosom when Eric kissed her, she would sigh, brush her hair from her face, smile, but I could see her jaw set. The sun behind her is turning the edges of her frizzy, undone hair into a flaming corona of split ends and shame. She's not out of the woods yet, to employ this highly unclear phrase doctors insist on using. She used to dance ahead of us in her pink raincoat, skipping through puddles and pretending she did not know us. When she grew up, she planned to know everything and keep it all a secret. Girls like her are greatly inclined to cross their sevens and dot their eyes with little circles, but there must have been something to her because her favorite book was The Bell Jar, though I imagine she's moved on by now. She loved secrets, and even if she didn't have any secrets, she made sure that you thought she did. Her parents were undoubtedly psychotherapists who gave her to positive a self-image, then too many dykes told her she was beautiful. She smoked in a theatrical fashion, making a performance of it as she did of everything. She is comfortable showing the world that she does not know what she does not know and that she does not necessarily need to find out. She's free to waste her time as she please and she wasted tons of it. She stopped doing stuff, then stopped explaining why she stopped. She prefers thank you over sorry. Because sorry is just the token that was offered to ward off guilt. You see, I had no secrets. I knew nothing. I got out hopeful and I found nothing. I pee against the shower curtain thinking, did you say something stupid to somebody stupid? I'm a slumming debutante and combat boots, 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 boots fit my feet like a glove, like a glove on each foot, which means I suppose they fit like socks. I'm old enough to wait tables and shit out my first puppy. No one is bored. Everything is boring. I wheel my ivy pole down the carpeted corridor. My mom calls it walking a dog. Every place seems like it's a special place of special interest and expertise. And to that extent, I have no right to beat her. And you can't understand me because my experience is so different. And you must understand me because my experience is so important. Never speak until you're spoken to. Don't stare and never touch. You see the phrase, taxpayer's money. Still to this day, casts a mysterious spell of a baby boomer, one which I will never understand. She loves being a baby boomer and getting rid of unneeded household items by mailing them to her children who have much smaller homes. It takes a lot to be minimalist. Social capital safety net, access to the internet. And they will swap things such as laptop shoes, films, cell phones, bags, wheelchairs, hands, cats, palms for despicable particles of some kind, security, theater. If stupidity got us into this mess, then why can't it get us out? Awkward sex, sudden death, and other concepts. Awkward sex, sudden death, and other concepts. Has anyone tried plugging it out and plugging it back in? Has anyone tried awkward sex, sudden death, and other concepts? We should let them express their gratitude now. We will put pressure on them quietly later, reads the first translation. We should allow them to express their gratitude now and then quietly press reads the second. Same old skinny black suits and skinny ties, the same old hiked as you care dresses, the same old tiny bombers and bikers and mod and factory and new wave and no wave. And, and of course the internet lost its collective mind. Yet another strand of characteristically modern absurdity to either attack or joyously consume. Tiny bags, tacky bags emblazoned with designer labels, bootcut jeans, tube tops and fucking glitter. 
trends are always cynical and consumers are always in pursuit of a new must-have denim. Clothing brands have been smuggling spandex onto the legs of unsuspecting men. Ladies, hear me out. Bathrobes you can wear to work, what do you say? Somebody fucked up. Somebody crossed the line. That's not an indicament on a cuddle puddle. That's an indicament on crossing the line. Why are babies so stupid if humans are so smart? Men. Men are doomed. Everybody knows this. We're obviously all doomed, the women too. Everybody in general. Just a waiting game until one or another of the stupid things our stupid species is up to finally get us. But as it turns out, no surprise, men first. Second instance of no surprise, we're going to take the women down with us. Except for visits, we stayed home and saved money. I wrote poems and Sharpie all over the walls of my bedroom. I've gone to sleep extremely quickly, yes, almost instantly, but never passed out. I played Monopoly on my own. I played Colouette on my own and eventually got around to it. Masturbation seemed the natural outcome of my childhood. I imagined that sex would be somehow, God knows how, and I'm a glam off the mystical and coarsely animalistic, a warm and blurry experience that would transcend the mechanics. I took 500 cold baths, 2,400 sits baths, spent 480 hours in wet sheets, drank 3,500 glasses of cold water, herbal medicines, water purifiers, Flint and steel, if the skin fails to erupt, the purification might be affected instead by the bowels. The shivering, underfed patient is meant to rejoice at the onset of diarrhea. We set out to restore our dried up clock, plethoric bodies to their properly humid state. It is, it is hardly coincidental that these new expectations of mine require money and time. How many? Pairs of wings later, and they're still selling bras, and they're a mess. I think corporate body positivity is gallingly empty and passive aggressive. They give an illusion of feminine empowerment, but their empowerment is firmly within the boundaries of beauty culture, feminine culture, fashion culture, where they could once profit by making women feel worse. The money now is in promising them a way to feel better. It's all too rare, too rare to dislike, but. Where does this leave the one who dislikes it, huh? And I knew I looked like a mad woman. My hair all over the place, face ravaged by crying, breasts flopping around inside the oversized dressing gown. Am I losing my dignity in this flunky's outfit or it's actually making me seem strangely distinguished? A rogue elephant roaming free. A sufficiently dinky arena for my Dinky gift. To be truly elegant, one should not be noticed. That's what my mom said. Mothers in black, in white, in toasted almond and sensible nuts, the good, the bad, and the viscose. Some are middle aged and look forward to menopause because it may relieve their headaches, but the mothers in movies are either gone or useless. The dead mother plot is a fixture, a fiction so deeply woven into a storytelling fabric that it seems impossible to unravel or explain. Bambi's mother shot, Nemo's mother eaten by a barracuda, Lilo's mother killed in a car crash, Koda's mother and brother bear speared, Poe's mother and Kung Fu Panda two done in by a power crisp peacock, Errol's mother and Thor little mermaid crushed by a pirate ship, Human's baby's mother and I say chased by a saber to the tiger over a waterfall. I think mothers are killed in today's kids' movies so the fathers can take over. Womb envy. These were messages that Gmail had for years swept dutifully, quietly into my promotion tab. Now they were bursting into my main inbox, onto my phone's lock screen, into my head, and they just kept coming. 
And why we sleep and why we often can't. I try to stay my galloping pulse by thinking of water or mountain or fluffy sheep. I tell myself I am heavy, 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 heavy. I pursue sleep so hard I become invigorated by the chase. Everything was from duty, nothing from love. Duty killed you in the end. You think this is subversive, and I'm not sure. It's time to study infants, to study animals, to study primitive people, to be psychoanalyzed, to have a religious conversion, get over it, to have a psychotic episode, get over it. It's the big other symbolic substance, domain of unwritten customs and wisdoms best expressed in the stupidity of proverbs. Mice love to run. Mice love to run, he told me. And when he puts an exercise wheel in their cage, they typically lock several miles a night. These nocturnal drills are not simply a way of dealing with the stress of laboratory life, as scientists demonstrated in a charming experiment conducted a few years ago. They left a small cage-like structure containing a training wheel in a quiet corner of an urban park under the surveillance of a motion-activated night vision camera. The resulting footage showed that the wheel was in their constant use by wild mice. Despite the fact that their daily activities, foraging for food, searching for mates, avoiding predators, provided a more than adequate workout, mice voluntarily chose to run, spending up to 18 minutes at a time at the wheel and returning for repeat sessions. Several frogs and slugs also made use of the amenity, possibly by accident. And he stands up, taps his knife on his champagne glass, turns to his new wife and raises the microphone. And then he started reading. He is boring people to death. How kind they have all been to smile and nod through his sentences. He, he must have seen it as a sign that he was on the right track. They were tanned all over, so whatever it was they were doing, they must have been doing it frequently. Conversations were tolerated so long as they never became more than that. Saying no was uncool and yes could mean anything. And a me some place for fizzy water cocktails, mason jars, freshmen, lime chocks, vodka, and rum, a male barber bird in his seduction theater. In our music room, it qualified as a music room because it contained his clavichord. He was drunk, I could not see how long had he been like this. He is himself, it's just that he has two selves like revolving doors. He seemed amused by everything I said, everything he said himself to, only if it hadn't merely been a one-sided exercise in unburdening. You see, the occasional pirouette of self-deprecation is nothing if not good manners, but his deprecation felt too pleasurable. Relief would require no longer being himself. What was it about com complaining that felt so g good? You and your fellow sufferer emerging from a thorough session as if from a spa bath, refreshed and tingling. And I knew all I had to do to get rid of him was to wait him out. Sometimes I'd look at him through the fork and pretend he's in jail. You need to learn shame to be a performer. And I know that's a very stifling non-New Age thing to say, but it's true. If you're going to repeatedly get on stage and brazenly suck air in front of people, you might as well be canning them in the knees or robbing them. Performers must have some obligation to entertain. It's the price of attention. You see, attention can be harvested only from the minds of other people. And high quality attention won't come by force. In anthropological terms, it's a gift economy. The idea that lonely people don't deserve attention comes to us instinctively, as when we see an empty restaurant with a busy one next to it. One way to seek attention is to do something that gets lots of it. Performance, art, politics, crime, journalism maybe. But that seems to have another purpose, the purpose matters. But I retain nothing but headlines.
Now I retain almost nothing. Now I retain nothing but headlines. I retain almost nothing. Hormones are life. Hormones are mental illness. I don't need to make sense. I just need to let it go. I don't need to make sense. I just need to let it go from what it had been into what it now is about how they wanted it more and no one wanted it less. This is where what happened to people happened in a head. The lunatics, the stunned and baffled, the people whose luck, if they ever had any, has run out. Your mind has been blown countless times. Your mind has been blown countless times in the silence. The silence no longer seemed particularly dumb. Thank you, that's it. <laughs>